it's gonna be hi everyone we're at Hensel co-op here in Hensel Ontario and this is my friend Paul he's gonna give you a tour hi everybody welcome to the Hensel co-op uh, we're gonna take a tour of our, our processing facility here at our, our what we call our new warehouse I thought I'd give you a bit of an introduction before we get going uh, my name is Paul Schuster I'm the environmental health and safety manager for Hensel co-op I'm also our emergency response coordinator uh, I'm going to take you on a tour and you might be wondering why is the safety guy taking you on a tour? Well, I need to make sure this fine young lady doesn't get hurt while we're walking around. The idea for today is to, to give you a bit of an idea of uh, some of the technology and advances that the Hensel Co-op has, has brought to the forefront uh, to minimize obviously the opportunity for injury, but to uh, maximize our efficiencies and, and allow us to produce product uh, for locations <coughs> excuse me, all around the world. So we are uh, about 600 employees. We have uh, 30 locations. Uh, the Hensel Co-op is 80 years old. Uh, so we've been around for a bit of time. We've got some experience. Uh, of those 30 locations and those 600 employees, we have 170 uh, transport trucks that are driving down the road. Maybe you've seen some of them around. There is, uh, they travel approximately 8.3 uh, million kilometers per year, which is pretty crazy. You're going to see some of the product as it's uh, being processed. You're going to see some of our storage uh, and you're going to see how it gets out the door into those trucks and, and of course, uh, all across the world. Uh, we're a pretty diverse co uh, company. We have uh, a lot of different opportunity from uh, agronomy to business to marketing to health and safety to transport to food products to feed divisions to an energy division where we deal with propane and, and petroleum products. Uh, so we're a very diverse company with, with lots of different opportunities. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the tour. Come on, let's go out and check, see how things go. So this is one of our production areas. Uh, we have several production areas in Ontario. Uh, you can see some of the robots uh, running, uh, moving some of the product. Uh, I'm going to get Wim to uh, introduce a little more to this. He's, he's into our production management, so he can answer some of these questions a little better than I can. Uh, but you can see that we take technology uh, very seriously here. And, and one of the problems with being a, a agribusiness is the simple fact that a lot of this stuff is, is archaic in nature. And, and the old way of thinking of handling beans and throwing around 50 pound bags of beans. That, to get them on a skid, to get them in a truck. Uh, we work very hard to, to minimize the risk to our employees and make sure that we optimize, you know, what our employees can do and hopefully don't get hurt. What you see in there is uh, one of our robots, uh, robot forklift coming to pick up the skid. Uh, these robots will, will pick up this skid, uh, go out through the orange doors that you can kind of see behind the robot uh, and take it out into our warehouse, uh, which we'll check out right now. Just kind of watch this guy, it's kind of neat. He's going to pick this up. There you can see. And without any humans around, it's going to take that skid and take it out to the warehouse. So let's go to the warehouse and see where it's going. Obviously, we have safety signage all over the location, trying to make sure that we keep our employees safe and our visitors. So without going too far, you can see our warehouse. Uh, this is where we store some of our product. We have multiple warehouses. We have two on site in Pencil. Uh, we have one in Exeter and, and some smaller storage units at, at each of our, uh, not each of them, but at some of our facilities uh, across Ontario. Uh, we also have some facilities in Manitoba. Uh, but you can see the product that's stored in here. Uh, we take technology very seriously. Uh, this plant can run with uh, zero people in the lower area. Uh, we need some people up in the higher area, way down at the back, to load transport trucks. Uh, but everything else in here is, is done uh, fully automated with robots. Uh, environment is something of importance to us. Uh, all the lights in here are shut off if there's no movement. Fans are there to keep air product going. Uh, and there's uh, that 
robot uh, coming out now and it's going to take that skid to uh, the stage area. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why everything's nice and neat and straight and organized. It's because of robots. So, we have a question. Uh -oh. Where do your beans go? Uh, our beans, actually, Wim is going to talk to you in a few minutes. He can better uh, tell you exactly where the beans go. But we hit about 40 different countries across the world, and, and we deliver to those 40 different countries. So uh, England, China, Japan. Um, like I said, Wim can probably answer that a little bit better than, than uh, I can. Okay. So one of the problems that we have in a diverse company like this, with products like this, you're just looking at our processing area, uh, but it's understanding the safety of our product and making sure that uh, you know, processing is done in a safe way, transport trucks are driven in a safe way, the office is operated in a safe way. Uh, so we have to take a, a multifaceted approach to make sure that uh, people learn and understand what the risks and hazards are. We use uh, technology through internet, uh, we use a behavioral approach to make sure that not only are we uh, safe, <laughs> from a physical standpoint, uh, but from a technological standpoint. So that guy's got sensors on it. There's no way that he can hit me uh, coming around the corner as freaky as that looks. Uh, <laughs> he's going to stop no matter what. So, uh, like I said, multifaceted, multi, multi things going on. So we can't just do the old lifting properly technology, put on a video and, and watch how to, how to lift things. We have to actually go through our processes. And, and we very recently got a huge grant to look at our, our procedures and find ways to break down these procedures to, to minimize the potential for risk for our employees, not just from physical perspective, but from a wellness perspective as well. One of the questions here is, how does technology help with the safe handling of foods? <laughs> well, you're seeing it right there. So, <laughs> Wim, how much weight's on that, do you think? Two metric tons. Two metric tons. So that's two metric tons of product uh, that a person doesn't have to touch. Wow. <laughs> whatsoever. And the robot's going to take it down and stage it and, and get it ready. Shipping. Uh, we use technology obviously to uh, to run the lines, uh, and we will talk a little bit about that in, in a few minutes when it takes in into that area. Uh, we use it for learning, so we can break down processes and, and procedures, and, and, and really just itemize what it is a person has to do, and then scrutinize those little aspects of it through technology, through video, through computer, through internet, uh, so that they get a good way to learn what they're doing. And then we do practical portion of it to make sure that it's not just an education-based program, but nice. a program as well. You can see down there, we also have interaction with, with both humans and technology, <laughs> both who are product at the same time. It's <laughs> so a lot of moving parts here, a lot of moving things, but tons of opportunity, tons of different business classes and types of things going on. But this is our warehouse. Yes. So, sorry. What kind of beans do you handle? Well, this is a great segue to pass you <laughs> on to Wim. Wim's going to take you on a bit of a journey here. Uh, give you an idea of some of the, the beans that we handle and, of course, see some of our technology at work. Nice. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Wim Carlson. Um, talk about beans a little bit. Um, we have lots of different types of beans, dry beans, and we also do soybeans. Uh, the dry beans come in many, many different colors. A lot of red ones we see, white ones, and black ones. And everybody knows about brown beans, but the brown beans aren't really brown when they started out. These are all white beans, and because they get cooked in sauce, that's how they turn brown. Um, we talk a little bit about food safety, that uh, it starts right at the grower level. Uh, they, they document, and they do everything they can to grow a very good crop. Um, the documentation it gets forwarded to us and we do a full traceability on products coming in from what grower, what silo storage we're going to put them into, the day we're going to process it, the day we're going to pack it, and the day we're going to ship it, and also what container it's going to go into um, and what country and customer it's going to go to. Uh, so it's a full traceability, which is very important for us. Uh, we ship all over the world. We'll hit 40 countries. Um, and it all depends what type of bean that country uses for their, for their food source for the country. 
Um, we go to England, for instance, to UK. Uh, we supply out of this plant about 50% of the UK need. And that's a lot of tons of beans. We ship to factories who make beans and or soya drink uh, every day. And that's what we supply. The packaging, it varies a lot because we pack it to the request of the customer we're shipping to. Some are going in small bags and some are going in large tote bags. So it's very diverse in that sense that we can supply everybody. Um, if we can walk a little bit further, I'll show you a couple of things that we, uh, we do as well. Sure. Can you talk about um, the lights keep turning off? What's that about? Okay, so the lights keep turning off because our auto-guided vehicles, our robotic forklifts, they do not need any lights. They can work in the dark. <laughs> the only reason why we have lights is, of course, help the environment, do not keep the lights on all the time, and for people walking through. Nice. So as you walk through, the lights come on, and as soon as you're through, the lights are off again. Awesome. Do you grow jelly beans like in that case? They never get to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> They're always eaten before they get to us. <laughs> so each package, and I can show you here. Lot number. This lot number is unique to the actual container. Um, every containers. So 20 foot containers, they'll hold roughly about 20 metric tons. And we ship on average about 60 containers out of this facility every day. Wow. And they're going all over the world. We put them on the train in Toronto. And they'll either go to Vancouver or Montreal and they go on to a ocean going vessel for um, for transport to a different country. Okay. So we will go and take a look to see what our packaging looks like. Everything is fully automated. We have robots running, um, picking up bags and filling pallets. The bags are fully automated filling sequences and um, we have full traceability there and also the uh, food safety is important. Everything will go through a metal detector, we check the weight on each bag and uh, make sure the labeling is all correct. Awesome. And it's going to get a bit louder as we move into that it's space, yeah? Get a little bit louder. Okay. So this area, that's where the beans are being stored overhead. Um, we, we grade them, we make sure that the quality is correct, and then we, we'll pack them into bags. Um, you can see on this side, we do large tote bags, they're one metric ton each. Um, and on the left side, you see the small bags, and in this case, we're actually doing 30 kg bags. We have we have Jordan here. Jordan we operates the line. Uh, Hi Jordan. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. Jordan, tell us a little bit about yourself, of what uh, background and what you do here. Um I am an operator on the bag line and I
Do you like it? Yeah, I, I like this job. It's a really good job. Yeah. What's a typical day look like for you? A typical day is me working with the AGBs and the rest of our robots and mine. And I work with a lot of different bean types and bag types and a lot of, yeah, a lot of beans and bags. <laughs> So, Jordan, uh, did you get any formal training for this job? Uh, no, I did not. It's um, no specialized training in this job. It's just mainly we gotta make sure you can have on the screens properly and to make sure that um, everything's going well and that the, like, move the air is right. Cool. So, and how much do you produce in a day? Uh, you can produce about uh, 10 loads per ship um, on each line, and the robots do pretty much all the lifting. Yeah. And uh, I probably lift about maybe four bags a day, and that's pretty much it. The robots do the rest of it. All right, thank you very much, Jordan. Jordan right, is taking a look at these robots doing some lifting here. That's awesome. Yeah, these robots, they pick up two bags at the same time. And we have two of them, so four bags. Um, like we said earlier on, 10 loads in a ship. We've got 20 loads per day. Between the two lines, there's 40 loads in okay. one 24-hour ship. Wow. So, uh, lots of production. The world needs food, and we're supplying it for them. That's awesome. If anyone has any more questions for our friends here at Hensel, this is a great time to ask. We'll just we'll just keep looking here at these robots. I, I'm curious, when the robots are in the space over here, what happens when their battery goes low? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> so, when the battery goes low on the robot, they send a signal to our battery exchange station. The battery exchange station has a automatic robotic cart as well. It will pull a full battery out of the station, puts it into its case, and then parks into the back. The robot forklift can pull right alongside, and it'll do an automatic battery exchange. It'll take the empty battery back into the stand, turn the charger on, and it'll be ready for the next one. Wow, so the, the robots charge themselves. Charge yeah? themselves. Fully, fully automated battery exchange. They run, they can run for about 12 to 14 hours on a full battery charge, um, which is quite good for a, for a big battery. Like yeah. And better than humans. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, they keep working. Um, they're maybe not as fast as somebody on a regular forklift. Uh, they do not run into things. So that's a good thing. Um, everything has to be set up for them so that everything is uh, always the same. And if they make a mistake, they'll make the mistake many, many times. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, friends, for sharing your, your work with us. Happy Canada's Agriculture Day to everyone joining in. And we'll, we'll sign right. off for now. Right.